Vertical circles. A person rides on a Ferris wheel. There's the Ferris wheel. They sit on a Newton scale, which measures normal force, because that's what scales really measure. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel motion, what does the scale read? Mg, A. B, is the normal force bigger than Mg? Or C, is the normal force smaller than Mg? Once again, we get to vote. Once again, how, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. Question? No, I'm just ready. Oh, you're ready to vote? Yeah. So you're ready. Who says at the bottom, A, normal force is going to be Mg? Spencer, one, two. Is that a hand up? That is? At the bottom. So, yeah, right where the person is drawn? Three. Who says it's going to be bigger? One. No? Took your hand down, Kyle? Nate says one. Braden, is that a hand up? Okay, two, three, yeah, your name, three. Who says less than? <laughs> this is a job for a free body diagram. So you ready? What are the forces acting on this person at the bottom of the Ferris wheel? Get the obvious one. So all of us, let's draw a little MG down. And now, here is the added question we're going to be asking for the next while. What path is this person tracing out? I'm looking for a word that begins with letter C. Circle. No, even more basic. What path is this person tracing out? A circle. So where must the net winning force be pointing? Toward the? Toward the? Center. What force would be pointing up towards the center? The normal force would have to be pointing toward the center, and it has to be the winning force. Because if you're moving in a circle, which way are you accelerating? Toward the center. Which way is your net force? Toward the center. Which way is your winning force? Toward the center. In fact, if we wanted to write an equation, who's winning? Who's losing? Minus mg. What does winner minus loser always equal? And here's the only adjustment. Look up, look up, look up, look up. It's going to be MAC. And that AC is either going to be V squared over R or 4 pi squared R over T squared, depending on what information they give me. What's the correct answer then? B. Both from the free body diagram and also if I get the normal force by itself, how would I get the normal force by itself? So you're going to get mg plus mac if you add something to mg you must get a bigger answer than mg the next time you're on a ferris wheel you will feel slightly heavier at the bottom only slightly because ferris wheels are pretty tame uh, but the enterprise which is at playland also goes in a circle and you're going way faster at the bottom you will feel a larger normal force you'll feel heavier or at the bottom of a roller coaster loop, you'll feel heavier. On a Ferris wheel, people feel light at the top and heavy at the bottom. Why does this happen? I've already given the explanation, the explanation for heavy at the bottom. Let's do a free body diagram for the top. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. Mg. What else? Normal force, which way? Up, because their head is pointing up. What path are they tracing out? A circle. Where must the winning bigger force be pointing toward the, so I'm going to draw normal force bigger smaller or the same size as mg smaller who's winning who's losing normal force what does that equal mac how would I get the normal force by itself swappy dance we would get this Gravity minus MAC, that equals the normal force. This is at the top. Up here is at the bottom. And you can see, Mitra, we have an almost identical start. MG, but at the top, you're less than MG because you're minusing. You feel lighter. At the bottom, you're more than MG because you're adding. You feel heavier at the bottom. Uh, in a roller coaster loop, is your head pointing up at the top? 
So it would be a different free body. De- Which way would the normal force be pointing if this was a roller coaster? Also inwards, because it points in the direction that your head is pointing, because that's which way the chair is pushing. We'll look at those later. In Latin, the word centripetal means towards, pedal, the center, centri. So when an object is moving in circular motion, it has inwards or centripetal acceleration. I will use the word centripetal, but you can just think circular, and the C that I'm putting as a subscript technically stands for centripetal, but you can just pretend circular. Conveniently in English, both words begin with a C. So, by Newton's second law, F equals ma, there must be an unbalanced force in the same direction as the acceleration. So an object moving in a circle has a centripetal force, not a centrifugal force with an F. That I went on a rant last class and I said that's not a force, that's your own inertia wanting to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed, it's mythical, it's not a force at all. Some like to use the following notation. If I'm moving in a circle, I'll call it FC equals MAC. You want to know the biggest dumb mistake that kids make in this unit? Because the acceleration equations are so complicated, I've long since lost track of how often I see kids write that, and then on the next line, they'll say, well, that equals V squared over R. That's the acceleration. It's M V squared over R. Or the more common one I'll see them do, Matt, is this one. They'll say, well, that's 4 pi squared R over t squared. Again, that's acceleration. If you want to make it a force, you have to put the m in front. By far the most common silly mistake, Sarah, kids forget the m. Forget the m. Especially when we look at rocket science later on. So, in our winner minus loser approach, the centripetal force will always be the net force, which means Fc will never show up on your free body diagram. Do you see an FC on any of our diagrams here? No. It shows up in the winner minus loser equals portion. And it will be the vector sum. It will always be pointing towards the center. Winner will always be pointing towards the center. So in the previous example, the Ferris wheel is a rigid wheel. The top and the bottom will always have the same speed. This is uniform circular motion. This is not always true. Consider a pendulum like this. Here, if I spin it in a vertical circle, I think you can see it slows down at the top, speeds up at the bottom. We can handle at the tippy top and at the very bottom. We will not look when the mass is right here or right here or right here or at any funky angles. We won't look at that. Example three says, write force equations for the vertical pendulum at the top of the loop. Okay, at the top of the loop, what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious, you know what? Let's do the bottom of the loop first. I think the bottom of the loop is going to be a bit easier. So let's leave, put a B, leave some space. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Which way? Down. What else? A rope, huh? Tension. In fact, this is the equation which is going to have a T for tension and could also have a T for period. Don't get it mixed up. So, uh, tension. Who's winning? So, at the bottom of the loop, we would have this. Tension minus MG equals MAC. Or, tension minus MG equals M. V squared over R or tension minus MG equals M 4 pi squared R over T squared. Problem. Those two T's are not the same thing. So what do I do if this situation ever arises? we look up for a second. I literally, I write this and then I go, I'm going to confuse those T's. Keep looking up, Ange. I do this. Do that. Replace the tension with an FTF, force of tension. 
I've even considered using F subscripted T for tension back in unit two. I may I may re change how I teach. That's now, I'll do A in red. What about at the top of the loop? What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Gravity, which way? Down. down. Gravity's down. Gravity's not towards the center. Gravity's down. What else? Tension. Which way? Along the rope. Who's winning? Both. So what's my equation going to be here? Tension and mg equals mac. Or tension and mg equals mv squared over r. Or tension and mg equals m4 pi squared r over t squared. Rats, I'm going to get that t mixed up with the other t. Uh, I'll call that tension f sub t. Where is tension going to be the smallest? At the top or at the bottom? In your head, look at the first line for part A and the first line for part B. Get the tension by itself and tell me whether you think it's going to be smaller at the top or at the bottom and why. Why is it going to be smaller at the top? It's going to be MAC minus MG, where at the bottom it's going to be MAC plus MG. Yeah. Where, so this was a question they asked one time on the provincial as a using principles of physics right to explain. Uh, where is a rope more likely to break, at the top or at the bottom? Why? Tension is greater. Why? Because of that. That was a nice, It was a nice little thought puzzling. So in a vertical circle, there can be forces that speed up the object. This tension one, gravity is causing it to speed up on the way down and slow down on the way up. We will not look at any of the situations like right there or right there or right there. All we'll deal with is at the very tippy top and the very tippy bottom or tippy top and bottom, bo whatever we call the bottom, okay? The net inwards force, MA, is MV squared over R or M4 pi squared R over T squared. And there are no horizontal forces, so we'll ignore them. Or we'll assume the horizontal forces cancel out. There may be horizontal forces, but the net horizontal force, Lena, will be zero. So what are some kinds of questions I'll throw at you? Well, Ferris wheels and or roller coasters is going to be at least one of those. Oh, skateboard uh, ramps are circular as well. So, example four. Turn the page. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Uh, for all of these, though, I will always reserve the right to reverse this question. So this question here says this. 70 kilogram passengers moving at 10 meters per second at the top of an upside down roller coaster. Find this force the seat exerts on the person. What force am I really asking you to find? What's another word for the force that the seat exerts? Okay, so in this question, I'm giving you the speed and saying find the normal force. I would have no problem giving you the normal force and saying find the speed. Okay. This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. MG, which way? Straight down. What else? Which way? This one down. Now, in the Ferris wheel, the normal force was up. The normal force is really which way your head is pointing because the seat is what's applying the force. So in a Ferris wheel at the top, the normal force is pointing up. In a roller coaster loop at the top, the normal force. Uh, this, by the the other thing this could be is the, if you remember the ride at Playland called the Enterprise. That's the one that when it goes fast enough, you're always pointing towards the center because it keeps you inverted. Okay? So we have um, normal force. What's my equation? Normal force plus mg equals mac. Now, there's two equations for circular acceleration. One has a v speed, one has a t period or time. Which one am I going to use? What did they give me in this question? Okay? So it's going to end up being fn equals mg 
plus M, plus Mr. Duke? Fn plus mg equals mv squared over r. I wouldn't take too many shortcuts until you get really comfy with this. You might say, Mr. Duick, why don't you just go straight to the equation from the first line? You know what? Once I do a bunch of these, maybe in my homework, but I'd go systematic. What are we trying to find? Okay. Can you see also it would be fair game to ask you to find V if I gave you Fn? I would probably crunch this as a number and then times by R divide by M square root. Uh, the mass here does not cancel. Heavier people are more affected by amusement park rides. That's why little kids can go on rides, no problem. But sometimes you may find as you get older, oh, that ride that I used to be able to handle, no problem. I haven't been on it in 25 years. I threw up. M doesn't cancel. So we're going to get this. The normal force equals mv squared over r minus mg. The normal force is going to be 70. 10 squared. What's r? Yeah, I'll either tell you in the picture or in the question. Minus 70 times 9.8. Can I do that one in my head? Nah, yucky math. Seventy times. Whoop, let's try that again. Seventy times ten squared minus divided by eight. Take away seventy times nine point eight. Hundred eighty nine. Does this person feel heavier or lighter at the top of the loop? Well, I don't know. First, I should find this person's normal normal. So what's 70 times 9.8? Okay. So they feel significantly lighter. In fact, they would feel like they were about to fall out of the coaster. They're not. There is still 189 newtons of breathing room, but you would scream here. Absolutely. It would get your attention. You would feel, wah! And that's, that's what they're trying to accomplish. Safely give you a thrill. Could you ever feel more than your weight at the top of the loop? It's all about that V. Yeah, if that V gets fast enough and it's a squared, so maybe instead of going at 10, if I was going at 40 when you ran the numbers, you might end up with an answer still bigger than 700 newtons. You would feel more than your normal. You would really feel like you were getting pushed into the chair instead of falling out of the chair. Oh, I knew I had a little thought. What would happen to the scale reading if the roller coaster moved slower or if the roller coaster moved faster? If the roller coaster moved slower, what would happen? Less. Convince me. Okay. So, well, you know what? We can answer this, I think, the same way for both. What was our final equation for normal co uh, force? It was mv squared over r minus mg as... V decreases, Fn decreases. It is a squared. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. So twice as slow doesn't mean twice as light. Uh, as V and I increase uh, decreases. That's an arrow pointing down. Normal force decreases, and so that's uh, for A. For B, as V increases, normal force increases. What would happen if the normal force was zero? Could you ever do that? Yeah, you would make it so that this V gave you an answer here that was exactly the same size as mg. And what would that mean? A very poorly, unsafely designed ride. Uh, it would mean that if you went one millimeter slower than that, you'd leave the track and fall down in our magic physics world with no friction and all that. Yeah. In fact, example six. Let's, here's our segue. If the pendulum in example three 
or the upside down roller coaster in example five were moving at minimum safe speed, what would that imply about the forces? It says find an expression for the minimum safe speed. Well, what would it, what it would imply, let's do B for the roller coaster right here. There's the normal force equation. If you're moving at minimum safe speed, what would you feel as your normal force? which would now give us mg equals mv squared over r. I just took that equation and let the normal force be zero. Now the m does cancel. In other words, the minimum safe speed doesn't depend on whether you're small or big. Get the v by itself. V equals the square root of GER. I'm willing to bet ride engineers, that's one of the things that they probably have memorized at their fingertips and they know, don't ever do that. Okay. So for part A, when it says, what would that imply about the forces? Uh, for the second one, normal force is zero. What about the first situation, the pendulum? Well. Watch really closely. I'm going to try to get to the minimum speed. Watch. So right now I've got lots of breathing room. I'm slowing down. Slowing down. Slowing down. What do you notice is happening with the rope? So at minimum speed, what do you think tension is exactly? I, that would be the magic where there was no slack but no force. That would be minimum safe speed. Oh, it's very similar to normal force being zero. So let's take the tension equation underneath the first circle and let's let tension, let's write up here, uh, tension would be zero, tension would be zero, and we'll get mg equals mv squared. Oh, ha! Same answer. There's your minimum safe speed for either situation. This is one of those experiments you should try at home if you haven't already. How many of you have ever, as a child, had a pail of sand or of water and spun it in a circle and not get sour, okay? Now, how many of you then have done the experiment slowing down, slowing down to see how slow you can get the water, especially on a hot summer day, because if you get splashed, you don't care. Yeah! So here's the question then. If we spin a bucket of water fast enough, it is possible to momentarily invert the bucket and not have any water fall out. Why? You know what this is a job for? There you go. What are the forces acting on one molecule of water in the bucket? Get the obvious one. What else? Manir, you're right. There is a, it is touching a surface, the, the pail. There is a normal force. Who's winning? Let's write an equation. What would the minimum safe speed be? What would change in this equation? Your hint is we just did it. Huh? Okay. Minimum speed means that the normal force equals zero, so we get this, mg equals mv squared over r, oh, good gosh, v equals the square root of ger, so we can safely say as long as v is bigger than the square root of ger, there will be a normal force. What that means is the water molecules feel like they have weight. They feel like they're getting pushed into the bucket because the bucket is pushing back on them. They feel an artificial gravity. So there's, when you tried to push the envelope, what you were doing by trial and error was trying to find the speed that was exactly 9.8 times the radius of your arm plus the bucket square root. And if you have never tried that, that's your homework this summer. Try that. Worst that happens on a hot summer day is you get wet. Yeah, hi, yeah. Yeah, 
That's why I said do it in the summer. Or if any of you are going anywhere warm over the winter break, try it there. Okay. Let's go for a drive. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. A student is in a car that's traveling at 28 meters per second on a hill of radius 120 meters. Okay. We're going to make, in our magic physics world, the hill be perfectly circular. When the car is at the top of the hill, what upward force does the seat exert on the student? What's this question really asking me to find? Okay. What's this a job for? What are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. What path is this car tracing out? A circle. Where is my longer winning force going to be pointing? Toward the center. What other forces are in this diagram? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? How do you, so now we have another tool in our arsenal to decide how we know something is bigger or smaller when you're moving in a circle. Winners towards the middle. No? Not if you're on the underside of a hill. Oh, in this situation? Yeah, I, I think. What's my equation? Uh, which expression am I going to use for A? Did they give me the speed or the period of the hill? Okay, so it's going to be mg minus fn equals mv squared over r. Mitra, how will I get the uh, fn by itself? So the normal force is going to be mg minus mv squared over r. Pause. Will the student feel heavier or lighter at the top of this hill? Heavier or lighter? What's your normal normal? mg. So are we adding to mg or subtracting from mg? So lighter. This is the stomach feeling you get. Okay, some of you've had them in the car. That, that uh, right? What do we get? Uh, what masses don't cancel here? There is an m in everything on the right, but there's not an m in the normal force. Uh, 72, 28, 72 times 9.8 minus 72 times 28 squared, all over. Where's the radius? Oh, 120. What do we get? Six hundred eighty-eight, six hundred eighty-nine. Yeah. I forgot the squared. I forgot the squared. Do heck? How do you do that? I hit the squared button. I thought. Uh, two hundred thirty-five point two. That makes more sense to me because that was way too close to the normal normal. Uh, two hundred thirty-five newtons. I'll call it. It's a force, so newtons. Yes. B. How fast would the car need to travel for the student to feel weightless? Whenever I say feel weightless, what am I really, what's that code for? Fn is zero. Oh, so we'll just get mg equals mv squared over r. This time the mass does cancel. And Caleb said, oh, we're getting square root of gur again. But now we're actually going to crunch it. 9.8 times 120 square root. Thirty-four point three. Yeah. Um. What would happen? Did I ask a part C? Oh, good. What if I went 34.4? I'd leave the ground. You asked, is it ever possible for the normal force to be bigger? For that split second, yes, and you'll leave the ground.
depending on what your goals were. Raj has a mass of 72 kilograms. He's riding a Ferris wheel of 12 meters and is moving at a constant speed. At the top of the Ferris wheel, the bench that he is sitting on applies a normal force of 450 newtons. What's it? Yeah? I have a quick answer. Yeah? So For part C? I think the amount of air you, I don't think the mass cancels. And so you would leave the ground, but the amount that you would leave the ground if you were a bus would be very different from the amount at the same speed. So let's, let's go 34.4, okay? A car, a little Austin Mini would get more height, I think, than a bus would. And we're in our magic physics world because also in real life, your wheels have suspension and some shock and there's deliberately some give. And so at 34.4, you probably wouldn't actually leave the ground, but you'd feel very terrified and you'd panic. It would just, everything would feel wrong. So let's say you're going 50 meters per second. I think you would get air. The bus would get less air than the Austin. Okay, good question. What do you ask me to find in part A? Speed? At the top? This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on Raj? Get the obvious one. Get the obvious one. Mg down. Uh, normal force which way? Up? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as Mg? Got to be smaller. So my equation for part A is going to be going to be what? Mg minus Fn equals mv squared. Mr. Duick, how come you didn't write mac? Because they're asking me for speed, so I figured out this time. I'm pretty sure I want the one with the speed in it. The other question they could have asked is, uh, how long does it take the Ferris wheel to go around once? I get the period, the t, by itself. Okay. Um, generally what I tend to do for these, like I could get the V by itself right now. This is where we're already complicated enough. I'm going to crunch the left side first. I'm going to get an answer for the whole left side. What's M? 72 times 9.8 minus 450. Is that in Newtons already or do I need to multiply that by 9.8? Now, the other thing I could do is I could, instead of giving you the 450 in Newtons, I could have said uh, at the top, he feels like he has a mass of 53 kilograms, and I would expect you to do the crunching. Yes? That equals mv squared over r. 72 times 9.8 minus 450. That totally didn't work. 72 times 9.8 minus 450. Wow, this thing is typing terribly. Do you get 255.6? How would I get the V by itself now? Times by R divided by M square root. Okay. V is going to be, what was R? I've scrolled down. 12 times 255.6. He already has, thanks. Divided by, what was the mass? 72 square root. <laughs> and I would have done the same thing if I was trying to find the period. I would get the whole left side as a number. Since the period is on the bottom, I'd have to cross multiply to get the t to the top on the other side and then get stuff by itself in square root. And now you're getting a feel for how we can design a ride ahead of time where we can say, okay, what do we want the riders to feel? How fast do we need to make the ride go? 6.5? 
hey, what's the normal force at the bottom of the Ferris wheel? This is the job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting at the bottom? Get the obvious one. Mg. What else? Big or small or the same size as Mg? You see how I said at the beginning of this lesson, more complicated questions actually make circular motion make more sense, I think. What's my equation going to be? Normal force minus Mg equals M. V squared over R. Why did I go with the V squared over R? Hey, what did I find in part A? So I would have no problem, this question here, just giving you part B on a test and expecting you to clue in, well, I can't do part A, B until I find the speed, and I'm going to have to find the speed at the top using the normal force. But I know that Ferris wheels, because they're a rigid structure, your speed at the top is your speed at the bottom because it's all attached to the same piece of metal. Is that okay? Uh... Not the swappy dance this time. I just got to plus the mg over. The normal force is going to be m72. V, I'm going to write 6.53 squared, but I've got this still stored on my calculator. R was 12. Is that right? Plus 72 times 9.8. 72 times answer button squared divided by 12 plus 72 times 9.8. 961.2. No, yes. Yep. Yeah. Or if I wanted to put that in kilograms at the bottom, this person feels like they have a mass of 98 kilograms instead of 72 kilograms. You'd feel it. This ride here is a pretty good roller coaster. This would not be a boring roller coaster. This would, oh, it's got some oomph to it. How many of you have gone on a swing when you were a kid? How many of you have tried to go as high as you can to loop? Can you... Can a child on a swing ever swing fast enough to completely loop over the swing bar? Yes. Yes. Like many things in physics, the answer depends. What's your homework? You can try number one. Yeah, you got to do some work now. You can try number one. Pardon me? And you're actually getting a fair bit of time at the end of this class. You're going to have at least 15 minutes. There you go. Um, two is good. I must have nuked three and not liked it, so that's okay. Four is good. That's a conceptual question. Five is good. Six is good. So far, I've assigned everything I know. I like the Ferris wheel question. Okay. Number eight is tricky, but I changed the wording of it. So it can withstand a maximum net acceleration of eight Gs. What does that mean? When you go winner minus loser, you'll get eight Gs. So to do number eight, you just want to say this, eight Gs equals m v squared over r. And that'll tell you the maximum speed this pilot can take this loop at. I think that's correct. I was always trying to do a normal free body diagram and normal force minus mg, and that knocked it down by one. I think that's the right way. If not, I apologize. 12 is good. Number 12, I didn't give you the speed. I didn't give you the period. I gave you the frequency but I've given you the period. The period is whatever one over that is. And so in that one, you're not going to use mv squared over r. You're going to use m4 pi squared r over t squared, the, the one that has the period in it. So it's one over the frequency. That's what it says on your formula sheet. So the period is going to be 1 divided by 0 0.8. 
uh, 1.25 seconds is the same as a frequency of 0.8 hertz. So did I assign every question? Yes. Okay, uh, just do every question. <laughs>